This is the disappearance of Jennifer Joy Kessie. Jennifer entered this world May 20th, 1981 and is from Orlando, Florida. Jennifer was a very hard worker and determined to get everything she felt she deserved. She had the love of her life, a new promotion, and just recently purchased a new home. What more could a person ask for? But one peculiar night, that would all change. Jennifer left her place of employment, known as the Westgate Resorts, around 6 p.m. Easter Standard Time. She would then have a small conversation with her father because that's something that they would usually do. After talking to her dad, she would then make it to her condo and have a brief conversation with her boyfriend. Rob says that they had a minor argument, but nothing serious. So the next morning he was expecting a telephone call from Jennifer, in which he normally receives. And when Jennifer did not call Rob, he decided to give her a call instead. Jennifer did not answer the call for Rob, and she also didn't answer the phone for her father as well. So Drew left his home, which was more than two hours away, and headed straight toward Orlando to check on his daughter. Jennifer's brother said that this was unlike Jennifer to go hours at a time without contacting anyone. So when they finally made it to her apartment, things looked normal. And from the evidence that they had obtained, they could tell that Jennifer had taken a shower because the towel that she had used the night before was still very damp. But everything in the residence was undisturbed. The vehicle that Jennifer was driving was missing. They just didn't know if Jennifer was abducted, lost, or just left on her own. They honestly didn't even know if any foul play had even taken place. Her friends even helped with the search. They passed out flyers while the police canvassed the area. One hour later, the Kessies were on the news saying that their daughter was missing. Jennifer, we just want you to know we love you. We're doing everything, everything we can to find you. The lead detective on the case, Bill Moore, thought that it would be a great idea to start with her cell phone. First with her GPS, inbound calls, outbound calls, as well as text messages. But it would take some time to gather up enough information needed for an alpha David. On Thursday, January 26, 2006, was really the first big break for this case. A woman called and said that she had seen Jennifer's car on the news and that that was the same car inside of her parking lot. They have a person on video leaving Jennifer's apartment and that may be the suspect. But the image quality is so distorted that they could not make a solid ID. So they asked the public for help to try and identify this person of interest. They had a couple tips come in, but nothing groundbreaking. The picture was so grainy that they even worked with different surveillance companies to enhance the footage. Jennifer's parents think it's someone who worked for the condominiums that she stayed in. They just think that this was a sexually related crime because she was very attractive and there was also no motive. They interviewed all of Jennifer's ex-boyfriends as well as her current boyfriend and they all were ruled out as suspects. The next step was to interview all the workers that had been working on Jennifer's condominiums. One of the maids on site said she recognized the person in the surveillance footage as a man she knows as Chino. Chino sat down with detectives and took a polygraph test and he passed with flying colors. The only thing that alerted detectives was that Chino stated that he had done work for Jennifer before she passed away. The detectives asked Chino why would he say that? Chino said that she's been gone so long that he automatically assumed that she passed away. But this was a red flag for detectives because how would Chino know that Jennifer passed away if this is considered to be a missing persons case? In 2010, the family pleaded with the police department to get the case over to someone that could do way much more than what they were doing. And the Orlando Police Department did just that. This case was given to the FBI, but in 2011, the Bureau gave it back to the Orlando Police. On her 12th anniversary of her being missing, the family got frustrated and everything boiled over. Her brother and family went in on the police department about how they were not doing their jobs and they haven't had any leads in the case. The family began stating for years that they had been asking for Jennifer Case to be deemed as a cold case. The reason for that being is that when a case is active, 
it keeps the files from being made public. The Kessies wanted the files to do some investigation of their own. They claimed that the Orlando Police Department had missed some steps in the first 48 hours. On January 24, 2018, the Orlando Police Department held a news conference announcing that Jennifer's face will be placed on the side of a bus. They hoped that that would bring them more leads. At this conference, her dad went into detail about the lead detectives not writing any specifics down about the case. And after they retired, they had to come back and take notes. Jennifer's family took them to court about the documents that they needed, but the police would not give them up easily. In 2018, the Orlando Police Department got a new police chief inside the department and handed all the documents over to the family. When the Casey's got the files three years later, the lawyer stated that the records received were disarray and it seemed like no report had been taken in the last 10 years. The family was definitely shocked by that. The lawyer said that it was a whole bunch of disorganized documents. Currently, the parents does not have any faith in Orlando Police Department and they also believe that they are responsible for finding their daughter. Jennifer's parents want to re-examine the evidence because Jennifer Carr had over a hundred and something fingerprints that the police never checked out. There were also hair follicles inside the car that they also did not test. The Kessies now have a new investigation team on the case to see if the old investigation team missed something. It's been 16 years later and they have no new leads on this case. They haven't found the body. They haven't found any new suspects of interest. They haven't found anything. So we're just stuck wondering, what really happened to Jennifer? I guess that's a question that, you know, hopefully we'll know soon or maybe we won't never know. But we pray that this young lady get justice and we also pray that her family finds peace. So this part of the segment is called Matter of Opinion. So do the supporters out there feel like had Orlando Police Department did their job better that they would have found Jennifer sooner? Or do you guys still feel like it wasn't enough evidence to actually find a suspect? Let me know, man. It's all the matter of opinion. Um, I also would like to get feedback from the supporters as far as this YouTube channel. What do you guys think that we could work on? Because we're going to continue to come with more and more content. And you guys got to know that, you know, this is my first time doing this. So it's not going to be as perfect as you would like it to be. And I will have bumps in the road. But I think for the most part, we're doing pretty well. And also, if you guys have heard of some cases that you would like me to cover, please let me know and give me as much information as you can. And I'll do my own research as well and try to put a story together for you. But just know that I do have a schedule with a lot of different people on it. So I'll definitely try my best to get back to it in a timely manner. Thank you guys for supporting us. We appreciate it.